10. Sexual Psychology In the previous segment, I discussed how children are different from adults and some of our psychological traits are age-related, such as our linguistic and cognitive learning abilities. We lose the ability to learn a language successfully after a certain age. I also discussed how children are wired to get attached to their provider and protectors. In this segment, I'll discuss the psychology of the sexes. Are men and women different in their psyche? Sexual dimorphism. One of the most important human behaviors is mating and reproduction. After food and security, sexual urge is the strongest instinct in animals, including humans. As animals, our basic biological purpose in life is to survive in order to mate and reproduce future generations. As a result, a lot of what we do on a daily basis are directly or indirectly influenced by our urge to mate. Homo sapiens are dimorphic, which means male and female sexes have to mate to reproduce. This also means that males and females are different in size, reproduction cost, and fertility window. Males are generally bigger than females. Another huge difference is the cost of mating. For males, there is little or no cost when mating. But for females, it means nine months of pregnancy and a very painful birth, and throughout history, a high chance of death at childbirth. Another major difference is the fertility window. Men stay fertile much longer and more constantly, while females have a shorter monthly window as well as a shorter overall fertility window as females experience menopause. Due to these basic biological differences, men and women have different mating strategies which influence our behaviors towards each other. On a more physiological level, men produce more testosterone than women, which makes us more aggressive while women produce more estrogen, which is more bonding chemical. As a result, the urge for sex differs between men and women. In general, men have a much stronger drive to have sex than women. For women, the urge for sex goes up and down during their monthly cycle, peaking during ovulation. While for men, the urge to have sex remains at a higher level throughout the month and throughout their lives. Research shows that men are more willing to have sex casually, therefore they treat sex as a more physical act, while women tend to treat sex as an emotional experience. This is because biologically women take a far greater risk when in having sex due to pregnancy and birth. In today's world, due to contraceptives, this risk is minimized, but the psychological hardwiring in women still prevents them from having sex with anyone, so they are still far more selective than men. Since men take no physiological risk during pregnancy, there is little genetic hardwiring in us to avoid sex. While for a man, a risk mainly comes from social, legal, or financial standpoints if he impregnates a woman. But for women, the risk is physiological and in pre-modern time, it also meant a huge survival risk. For example, historically for women, it was a matter of life and death. But for men, sex was just a great opportunity to pass on their genes. So throughout history, generally speaking, men were seeking sex while women wanted commitment. The stereotype that men want sex and women want love is somewhat true because women want the men to stick around after sex. The romantic archetypes too differ. For women, it's a strong beast who can be tamed, and for men, it's the damsel in distress that can be rescued. So the beauty and the beast are very different in what they really want. Men are more visual, so beauty plays an important role, while women are more auditory, so they prioritize the ability to tell good and interesting stories. How do these differences emerge in boys and girls? According to studies conducted by Masters and Johnsons in the 1950s and 60s, boys and girls grow at a similar rate until puberty. After puberty, the differences start to show more drastically. Boys tend to show more aggression due to high levels of testosterone, while girls tend to show neuroticism due to high level of estrogen. So boys express themselves through physical confrontations like fights and sports while girls express themselves through gossip and storytelling. According to the British biologist Lewis Walpern, who was born in 1921, men are modified women. He argues that male and female embryos are identical except the female has the XX chromosomes while the male has XY. 
He speculates that we are all conceived as female, but male embryos change because instead of two X chromosomes, they have one X and one Y. This even plays in language we call Mother Nature, not Father Nature. Instead, we have a Father God or a Sky Father. Lewis Wolpert also argues that agriculture developed because of women's gathering role within the human race. Men were hunters, therefore spent far more time away while the females stayed behind and gathered fruits and vegetables, which led to the agricultural revolution. This is not scientific, but in agricultural civilizations like China and India, they tend to be more feminine. In fact, Hinduism encourages vegetarianism within its religious teachings. In a novel titled Wolf Totem by the Chinese author Jiang Rong, he relates his own observation of spending time among the Mongols and saw how different they were from the Chinese in terms of masculinity because Mongols were predominantly hunters and herders while the Chinese were predominantly farmers. Of course, it's a work of fiction, but generally it's accepted among biologists that we are made of what we do and what we eat. This is why Kenyans dominate long-distance running sports like marathon. So Walpert argues that agriculture allowed cities and civilization to flourish and this made men to be more like women, staying in one place or attached to a piece of land. As a result, city walls and country walls were built to defend against other wandering hungry men. But going back to physiological differences, the American neuroscientist Paul Zak, born in 1962, studied brain chemicals and found that women release more oxytocin. Oxytocin is a nurturing chemical in which you understand and sympathize with others and sometimes it's called the moral chemical because it's released when you do morally good things like helping and looking after someone else. The reason for that is that estrogen, which women have more of, encourages the release of oxytocin. As a result, women are far better nurturers and more social. Women also have relatively larger hippocampus where we store long-term memory, which helps them to store more emotional data. This is why women notice subtle emotional differences on other people. This emotional sensitivity, when gone to the extreme, leads to neuroticism, which is far more common among women than men. Polzak also found that testosterone, predominantly the male hormone, blocks oxytocin. This explains male aggression. Throughout history, men were the soldiers and fighters. The physical beasts, therefore, had less necessity for understanding social cues. Mating urges. When it comes to mating, males and females have almost opposing strategies. Generally, females want taller men, while males want shorter females. Females want strong masculine men, while males want soft feminine women. But among the human species, it's generally the females who are the selectors. How do we know that? When it comes to cognitive abilities, the male bill curve is far wider than female. Polzak argues that since males fall on both sides of the IQ extremes, the most intelligent as well as the least intelligent, is because women are the selectors, so they usually select the most intelligent as better candidates for mating and security. In other words, the spectrum of intelligence is wide enough among men so females can have a choice. If all men were of the same level of intelligence, females would have a really hard time choosing. The ability to be financially well off is generally tied to a man's level of intelligence. In 1969, Hudson and Hens conducted research in which they found that women found a man's financial ability very important, while for men it was merely desirable. David Buss, born in 1953, the American evolutionary psychologist, in his popular book, The Evolution of Desire, explains males and females' dating and mating strategies. While most of the book deals with the studies done by other psychologists, he also carried out some studies in the 80s and later on, and it was consistent that women generally prefer men who provide it financially. These seem to be cross-cultural and around the world. Females generally see financial stability at the top of their mating priority. It makes sense since women go through pregnancy and childbirth during which they need help with food and security.
So competency in acquiring resources is extremely important for a man to meet. This is why men prioritize practical jobs and dominate STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering, and maths at universities, spending years and hundreds of thousands of dollars to get a degree in one of these subjects. Do you know the best way to learn all these subjects that doesn't cost thousands of dollars and take years and years of schooling? Brilliant makes it so easy for anyone to learn mathematics and computer science from the very basics to the very high level. It's all interactive. You're not sitting in a classroom bored, but you're an active participant. Brilliant has thousands of lessons from foundational to advanced maths to AI, data science, neural networks, and more with new lessons added monthly. Instead of going to university for four years and spending thousands of your precious dollars, you can learn for a fraction of that. For example, in the new How Technology Works course, you can explore topics like what actually makes a password good or how recommendation algorithms know what content you will like. To help you get started, try Brilliant for free for a full 30 days. So click on the link in the description. Also, the first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. There's an argument that technological advancement and modern comfort have come about because women asked for it. In other words, women want a man who can build a safe and comfortable nest, i.e. a place made of marbles. Therefore, men have had the strongest urge to tame the world. This is why men take risk when it comes to work. For example, more than 90% of work-related deaths are males because men take higher risk in the hope of finding or maintaining their partners. But in the pre-modern world, maternal mortality was extremely high, so women took a massive risk by mating in general, and mating with a weak man was a huge risk. Another important criteria by which women select their mates is based on a man's status. The most desirable men are athletes, singers, CEOs, anyone who's respected within their community. Women, mostly young women, flock to sleep with these high status men. There's an argument that it is in fact other men who help females select their mate. Since males respect those who rise above them either through competence, creativity or power, this in turn allows females to choose those men who are respected by other men. This is tied with security. If other men respect a man, he is more likely to be a safer bet than someone who is not respected by other men. When it comes to age, Bus also found that women prefer men older than themselves. The reason is that the older men tend to have more excess resources and have acquired more status or are generally more mature. Ambition, intelligence, hard work, height and strength are other selection criteria for women. He concluded that females look for survival traits. What is surprising is that when he studied women who are financially successful themselves, they have an even stronger urge to find a mate who is financially on the same level or better. This is often called female hypergamy, which means females date across or up financially, status-wise, age-wise, height and strength-wise, while males are more likely to date down in terms of status, finances, age, physical strength and height. This means men are okay with mating with someone who is younger, poorer, shorter, weaker, and less famous. Generally speaking, it shows that males and females' mating strategies are opposite but complementary. Males look for things they themselves lack, which is nurturing and soft feminine energy and beauty. Females, on the other hand, look for someone who is physically stronger, more experienced, and better provider. The urge to find a provider is so strong that women who are rich still want someone richer. The study is consistent in many different countries. David Buss also looked at men. It appears men generally want the opposite of what women want. One of the biggest criteria by which men choose is youth. Research conducted by Grammer in 1992 in Germany shows that as men gain more money and status, they tend to find partners who are younger. Of course, not all men have the choice. Since among Homo sapiens, the females are the selectors, men have to build the nest and hope that females show up. This is why men strive to get rich and famous so females notice them. This is why men used to carry big swords and rode big horses back in the days and today they buy sports cars, which is peacocking to attract women. 
but historically a small minority of men had all the women because they had all the resources and power. So generally speaking, most high status men have a younger partner, which while men of lower status are more likely to mate with women who are older than themselves. Of course, culture and religion also have an important influence in how we mate select. So morality has curbed some of our animalistic urges. The second most important criteria for men is beauty. According to evolutionary biology, beauty is generally understood to be tied to healthy genes. Since we have no knowledge of someone's genetic makeup, beauty is the best cue to judge if somebody is healthy who can produce healthy children. As women have become more financially independent in recent decades, they also prioritize look in choosing a mate. A third criteria by which men mate select is chastity. In most animals, their sexual organs are on the outside and visible for males to see when the females are ovulating. In humans, however, it's concealed, so human males do not know when a woman is fertile. As a result, humans can have sex anytime, so this opens up the possibility of paternity issues. When a man and woman mate, the female knows the child is theirs. But historically, it was impossible for a man to prove the child was theirs, so men had to rely on the woman's words or the physical features of the child. But we know humans lie, so one of the safest strategies for men was to mate a virgin. As a result, chastity has been important for men. Throughout the world, virginity was considered the ultimate sign of chastity. Today, thanks to DNA technology, paternity tests exist to determine the father of a child. Of course, these mating strategies are not always successful, so neither male nor female find the part. So, if neither male nor female find the partner they want, they choose the one that is available too. Reality is a lot harsher than an ideal partner. So most of us, we end up with the person we are able to get. Mating practices. David Buss also found some other differences among the sexes. Men are far more prone to casual sex than women are. Again, biology dictates their behavior as women have to deal with the consequences. For men, there are no negative biological consequences when they have sex. Of course, the risk of STDs is one, but for women, the risks are far greater, including physiological, emotional, and sexually transmitted diseases. Another reason is the size of men's testes. Men produce sperms on a daily basis, while women tend to have one egg during their monthly cycle. Research carried out by David Schmidt in 52 different countries found that men have far greater sex drive than women. This is also because men take no biological risk in mating with a variety of women. Also, men produce sperm every day, which means they are ready all the time. So to sum up, according to David Buss, women look for security values such as the ability to provide, protect, while men value beauty and physical health, the ability to have good-looking and healthy children. As a result, men strive to gain social status and money, while women try to present themselves as beautiful and youthful possible. Men compete for financial resources, while women compete with makeup and plastic surgery. Men show off their fast cars with big butts, and women show off their big boobs, and so on. We are animals, after all. One of the biggest differences that has emerged in recent decades is the education system. Girls are outperforming in schools and universities. Once a male domain has become a female domain. Why? Eleanor McCoby, born in 1917, died in 2018, was an American psychologist who wanted to find out psychological differences among men and women. The orthodox psychology tended to mainly focus on the similarities between men and women. She looked at 1600 studies and published her findings in 1974 in a book titled The Psychology of Sex Differences. Despite the fact that many of these differences turned out to be superficial, one major difference showed up in all the studies consistently. It was that girls do better in schools and boys do worse. This was particularly puzzling as the conventional wisdom was that boys tend to prioritize achievement more than girls do. The common explanation given is that schools are based on instruction in which listening skills play a major role. This favors girls more than boys because studies show that females are more agreeable. 
This also translates into aggression as most people in prison are men. So schools are geared for girls simply because they listen better. But there's another explanation that male and female brains are wired differently. How do you know this? The study of autism is an interesting one as it clearly shows that more often in boys than in girls. Simon Baron Cohen, born in 1958, a British psychologist argues that the female brain is predominantly hardwired for empathy and male brain is hardwired for understanding systems. The old saying that women prioritize feelings while men prioritize logic and reasoning. His 2003 research looked at autism, a condition in which children find it difficult to connect with others socially and emotionally. But what's surprising about autism is that it's predominantly a male condition, so most of autistic children are boys. During his research, he found that females showed more sympathy and greater sensitivity towards facial expressions and nonverbal cues. The male brain, however, is more geared towards how systems work. Although women fall to the extremes of empathetic brains and men fall to the extremes of systematic brains, there's also an overlap. About 17% of males have an empathizing brain and 17% of females have a systematizing brain. For Baron Cohen, autism is an extreme form of the male brain, which lacks the ability to read other people's emotions. Autistic children tend to have an obsession with some kinds of system like mathematical numbers, systems, games, computers, etc. Why? Because these are problem solution based. When you do maths, it's mostly problems that needs an answer. The same is true about games and computers. So Baron Cohen argues that autism is simply the extreme of male brain. And some male brain is wired for things and female brain is wired for people. Jordan Peterson, born in 1959, the Canadian psychologist also argues that female brain is wired to understand and empathize with children. As the primary caregiver of children throughout history, women are hardwired to be more socially aware and read subtle emotional differences. It makes sense as they have been the primary nurturers for children for millions of years of human evolution. Men on the other hand are evolved as problem solvers, therefore their brain is wired to seek solutions. But since males and females have coexisted for millions of years, it makes sense that they also have more in common than differences. The bell curve shows men and women are more similar than different. But it's the differences and the extremes that exhibit a clear gender differences. Men are far more aggressive, therefore the majority of prisons are filled with men. But this aggression also helps men to rise up the career ladder as they are more risk tolerant, so most of the CEOs are also men. Men are biologically hardwired to compete. As a result of male competition, Throughout history, the majority of men never procreated. For example, 8,000 years ago, for every one man, 17 women procreated. This means that only a minority of men were successful in mating with the majority of women. This male competition is also on a biological level. A woman generally produces one egg per month to be fertilized. But on the male side, the competition is fierce among millions of sperm chasing one egg. So males are evolutionary programmed to compete, which inherently makes them more aggressive and risk takers. And socially, it's males who pursue females and rarely the other way around. Throughout history, the majority of men died in wars. This mimics the sperm competition, where millions of sperms compete for one egg, but only one succeeds. Again, evolution favors that most men don't produce. Morality too reflects that. Protection of women is far more important than protection of men. The media shows that there's far more moral outrage at the death of a woman than a man. Next time you watch the news, pay attention. In times of disasters too, women are evacuated first. Our morality reflects our biological evolution. Hypothetically speaking, a single man can have thousands or even millions of babies, but a single woman is limited to a handful of children. So from an evolutionary perspective, who is more valuable? The old saying that a society with one man and hundred women can prosper, while a society with hundred men and one woman 
will die. So evolution says females are far more precious and important. This is why throughout history men died in battles and rarely women were sent to wars. Even today most dangerous jobs are taken by men, hence 90% of work-related deaths occur among men. Today the human psyche has changed though. More and more women have taken the male role of working and providing in the developed world. Therefore, more women have chosen not to reproduce at all. Birth rates is at its lowest in most affluent countries, simply because women work long hours, therefore no longer want to have babies. In poorer countries, however, the old gender roles means birth rate is still much higher than rich countries. Now, this shift in rich countries has slowly shifted morality too. When in the future a spaceship sinks in space like the Titanic sank in the Atlantic Ocean, you will not hear ladies first on the lifeboat. You might hear Mr. Musk and Mr. Bezos first and Mr. Bronson last. One of the key factors in sexual psychology has been the narrative of feminism that men and women are the same. As a result, many scholars are hesitant to contact research in the field that might show otherwise. Jordi Peterson has come under a lot of attack from feminists for saying that men and women are different. I think the argument from a feminist side has been that by proving a sexual difference between men and women, it perpetuates the old stereotype that only men can do certain things and vice versa. However, given our biological differences, it takes a decade and centuries to equalize the differences. But can we really fight evolution? It's a very touchy topic these days due to another development in rich countries, transgenderism. So the psychology of the sexes has become an ideological battleground. Therefore, it makes it hard to have an open and honest conversation. On the left, they minimize the differences, while on the right, they maximize the differences between men and women. But there's no doubt that most societies are changing when it comes to gender roles. Perhaps it's another evolutionary process. Today, a vast number of men lack the ability to mate, which is similar to most of history. Only a minority of men have access to the majority of women. We are animals and we are evolving. So to sum up, the psychology of the sexes showed that our biological differences translate themselves into our psychological differences. The difference is more visible in our mating strategies. Males and females seek the opposites for themselves. This makes sense. Millions of years of evolution has created opposite sex that each sex desire. It's not rocket science. Females value strong masculine protectors, while males seek kind, nurturing mates. But human civilization has tamed the world, so while our psychology is stuck in the past, our physical and social world is very different and very safe. Therefore, a vast number of men feel no longer needed as protectors and providers, because the police and military protect everyone and women earn their own money. As a result, more and more people live alone as marriage and childbirth rates have decreased. As science becomes more powerful, perhaps in some distant future, there is no need for mating at all as we can procreate babies in labs, like Aldous Huxley's Brave New World. But until then, we have to chase each other. In the next segment, I'll discuss the problem of psychology itself, mainly the psychological paradox of personality as well as the problems of psychiatry. <laughs>